It is 5 o'clock somewhere, and you've tuned into Season 3, Episode 1 of BRC. For those of you who'd like to watch this episode, I highly recommend it. You can view Season 3 on our website, YouTube, Spotify, WhiskeyNetwork.net, and Zencaster. I'm Carrie Moynihan, and in today's Tales from the Still, we'll journey to India, where I'll introduce Indri Single Malt Indian Whiskey with guest Madhu Kenna. Then later in the show, Chef Louise Leonard returns to give us her take on the Indian spirit in today's World of Wheezy. So kick off your shoes, pour yourself a dram, and join me for this episode of Barrel Room Chronicles. There's nothing better than the smell of coffee in the morning. What if you could enjoy a coffee subscription of fresh, roasted specialty coffee while making a difference in the lives of farmers that grow it? What if you also had access to a virtual coffee community of other coffee lovers and the coffee farmer and roaster? That's all part of the Farm to Cup Coffee Club subscription at Unleashed Coffee. Subscribe today. UnleashedCoffee.com well, hello. I'm going to say, is it Madhu? Yes, oh, good. Madhu. I got it right. Yeah. This is Madhu. Madhu is going to tell us his full name and the name of his brand here because I don't want to massacre either one of them. And then he's going to give us a little uh, information about his background in, in spirits and whiskey. Great. So Madhu. Um, well, my full name is Madhu Kanna, and I represent uh, uh, a great single malt whiskey from India, which is called as Indri. Uh, and also another great product from the distillery, which is the rum that we make, uh, a pure cane juice rum called as Kamikara. And uh, a little bit about me, uh, I've spent 18 years in the spirits industry and I have been taking a lot of Indian products out of India around the world, um, currently with Indri and Kamikara and uh, just love doing what I'm doing. Yeah, That's awesome. So tell me a little bit about how you ended up with this company and where were you before this that got you to here? Well, uh, you know, I started off my career working for a uh, for a Indian company which made Indian beer and spirits, which I took to Africa and Southeast Asia. Okay. Um, spending a lot of years with them, I moved to another single malt distillery from India, uh, which is called as Paul John, okay. and which is another great Indian single malt. Um, so, I was with Paul John single malt for eight year, eight years, oh, wow. eight long years, and. Uh, uh, took Paul John to about 35 countries around the world. Wow. And then I just said, I'm just going to take a break from the industry and just going to relax. Um, pandemic happened. So it was indeed relaxation. <laughs> but then uh, the owner of this this great distillery approached me and he said, Madhu, uh, and it'll be nice if you could give your hand with my brand. And uh, I said, well, you know, I just want to get back it out. And he said, no, you can't just rest. You know, <laughs> if you've got some great product coming out and uh, you've done that, been there, done that, and it'll be nice if you do it for me. Okay. So I went ahead and visited the distillery and uh, turned out to be that... Uh, uh, Piccadilly uh, Distilleries, the makers of Indri and Kamikara, uh, are the largest independent malt producer in India. Oh wow! Uh, and they, they at that point of time, they were sitting on an inventory of about forty thousand barrels. Oh wow! That's a and, lot. And um, six copper pot stills made in India, huge copper pot stills, uh, with a distillation capacity of about twelve thousand liters every day. Wow! And I said, man, if these guys have got this kind of infrastructure. Uh, and uh, they can turn out some quality spirits, uh, then why not? Uh, and that's how I got associated with the Piccadilly Distilleries or the makers of Indri about two years ago. And I don't think there's uh, turning back and looking back. You know, it's just going to be going ahead and doing things wow. for them. Yeah. So when the pandemic lifted, how soon did you get out on the road to, to work, work on this stuff? So 2021 August... Uh, was when I joined them and uh, our first consignment uh, was shipped out of the distillery uh, I think by Feb 2022. Oh wow. Uh, okay. So today uh, I mean it's just a year and a half and today we are in 16 countries um, and I think by the end of this year we'll be in at least 20-25 countries. So, that's, that's great. Yeah. And um, how long have you been? You've been in the U.S. for a year and a half or just... 
How long have you been in the US? Uh, the US, the, the first bottles landed in the US in the month of August 2023. Oh, okay. So that's exactly a year now. We are, uh, sorry, 2022. 2022. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So tw- 2022 August was when we had the first bottles coming in. And um, so, yeah, one whole year in the US market now. That's great. Well, I think we should taste some of these. Oh, absolutely. So which which order do you think is the best way to go? So I think we should start off with uh, this one, which is called as the uh, Indri Trini. Okay. Uh, Trini in Indian language, this is Sanskrit that's used over here, means three wood. Okay. Um, and the name Indri uh, is itself uh, pretty interesting because Indri is the name of the village where our distillery is located. Oh, nice. Uh, Indri or Indriya in Sanskrit also means the five senses. Oh. Uh, you know, and we said, what a beautiful name for a brand. And uh, so the first expression is called Strini because, again, uh, the owners of these distilleries were very... Um, uh, very interested in bringing out something which is very unique. Um, so they said, with the first expression, we should uh, we should do something which is very unique than the other uh, single malts that are made out of India. Um, so we 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 did a triple cask. So the triple cask uh, is very different uh, because this is. Uh, Indian six row barley. All distilleries in India use an Indian six row barley as the grain. Okay. So we also use an Indian six row barley, and the um, it's double distilled in copper pot stills, and the liquid is matured in three different types of cask: ex bourbon, French red wine, and PX sherry cask. Wow! So matured in each of them separately, and then married together for about 30, 40 days before we bottle it across. Wow! So you can see the you know, you can see all the flavors coming through of, yeah. of these three different casks into this particular dram. You it's know? got a great nose. That's a lot of it's a lot of flavor in that nose. Oh yes, it's it's, it's got a nice citrusy zest to it, and uh, there is this caramelized pineapples, orange Ooh. peels, uh, yeah. tropical fruits, a bit of uh, nuts. That's very interesting. I haven't had this many. Tropical fruits recently, for sure. I don't know if I've ever had this many tropical fruits come out so much. And and, and that nice oaky, you know, sweet oak finish towards it. Wow. That's fantastic. And how is, is it aged? There's an age statement? Uh, we don't mention the age statement on the bottle because while a lot of consumers in the U.S. understand that a whiskey that's matured for, like this is an average age of about six years. Now, okay. something that's matured in India for six years uh, has gone through a lot because we lose 10% of the liquid every year from a barrel to evaporation. So we mature whiskies differently and rapidly. Um, uh, whereas, um, you know, we lose 10% on one side. So six years for us, this is 100% natural color. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's dark and, for and this six is a, years. Yeah, and this is a non-chill filtered whiskey. Um, so... So you got all the flavors locked in over there. Oh, that's great. And this has all three barrel types. All three barrel types that's into it. Fantastic. So, so I think the the sweetness from the bourbon barrels, a bit of pepper, um, dryness from the wine barrels, and the sherry barrels, the PX sherry cast that we've used gives you that, uh, you know, the sweet fruits, uh, raisins, a little bit of chocolatey note to it. Mm-hmm. So that's how the, and with every sip, the liquid changes, you know, with every sip, the liquid changes, and there's a lot more happening over here. Yeah. yeah. Well, cheers. Oh, cheers, cheers, cheers to you. Well, what do you guys say? Do you say cheers or do you say mm. something else? I think, thanks to the colonization, cheers is a word that has been left with us and we continue to say cheers. Yeah, yeah we do too. Yeah. <laughs> See what happens when you get colonized by the British? Cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> mm. That's fantastic. And I wish you gave us other glasses. Mm. I don't, is, it, is there more glasses? <clears throat> I think we can dump it over here. And then oh, all right. I don't want to dump it though. I don't want to as well, but we have two more things to we drink. Do. So yeah. All right, bye. <laughs> All right, so this is, was this the first expression that came out? Yes, please. This is the first okay. expression that has come out, and it's, 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 it's been doing well for us. Um, Whiskey Advocate gave it a 94 points wow. and also rated it as one of the top 20 whiskeys of 2022. Oh, well, that's great. And then 
Which then, is next? And then from the whiskey portfolio, I think this is the next release that we are doing. Okay. Uh, that's called as the Drew. Uh, oh. So Drew is a cast strength single malt whiskey. It's bottled at 57.2% oh, or wow. 114 proof. Uh, it's select ex-bourbon barrels from the distillery uh, who are, uh, you know, put together. And uh, uh, the name Drew, uh, it means a wooden vessel. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's appropriate. Yeah, appropriate. So uh, a little bit more interesting fact is Dru in su- certain Sanskrit s- script also means a wooden bowl in which Soma, Soma is the uh, the olden name for liquor in India, oh, okay. was used as an offering when there was a religious ceremony going on to gods. There are certain gods to which alcohol was offered as a religious offering. Okay. So the Dru is the wooden vessel in which that was done. Um, however, uh, for us, something that was matured in an ex-bourbon cask for such a long time, um, we said, well, the wooden vessel is Dru for us. Yeah. And that's how the name... It's a great Dru name. I have a, yeah. have a friend who... Um, uh, she's half Irish, as, as or actually she's more than half Irish, I think. Right. And she's been doing these pagan school uh, things, and um, there was something I was going to say about that that made me think of this. I don't know. Anyway. Is it, is it something with the name Drew? Well, it, Druid, maybe. She does a lot of stuff with Druids. Okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah. No, I, I find all of the... I, she's always telling me about different like Gaelic words that mean things, and then... I find ways to incorporate them with whiskey. I like that. Nice. <laughs> so. nice. Ooh, that's very different nose. This is completely different nose because wow. it's just bourbon cask. So this one, um, I, I mean, for all uh, good bourbon whiskey, I mean, bourbon cask lovers, whiskey that's finished in bourbon cask, spirit that's finished in bourbon cask, this one is great. Um, is this also six row? Uh, this is also six row in Bali. Okay. Um, and just select X bourbon barrels across. When I say select, there are, there are a lot of bourbon barrels that's there in the distillery. But to make this, the master blender decides to pick up which kind of barrels that he wants to pick up the liquid from, and then he puts it together. Do you guys get specific distilleries to get your barrels from? And if so, are you allowed to talk about that? Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, I think a lot of the old barrels that's there in the distillery comes from um, Jack Daniels, Four Roses, okay. uh, a little bit from Jim Beam. But then I I think bourbon barrels, getting bourbon barrels is a scarcity today. Yeah. And even a few years back, in fact, a uh, few years back, we couldn't get such good bourbon barrels. That's why we moved on to get some red wine barrels and stuff like that. So, um, so from a lot of makers, but then a lot of the barrels that have come to us have come through brokers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's no clear one yeah, distillery or two distillery uh, characterization. The many distilleries who have <coughs> contributed to the that bottle. must make it hard if you say this is the this is the flavor I want, and then ah, you don't know where it came from. It su- surprises me as to how the uh, how the warehouse keeper and the blender work together to get the right profile they, every single time. You they know? have a hard job. I'm going to say that. This, this is one, fantastic. This one is this one is like fruits, mm-hmm. honey, um, gentle warm spices, a um, little bit of chocolatey nuts, orange peel, citrus. This kind of makes me think of Christmas. Mm, interesting. Because I, I have all of those things at Christmas. <laughs> I have spices, I have chocolates, I have... And it's warm. I can totally see this at Christmas time, sitting sitting by the fireplace, waiting for Santa to come. Oh my goodness, that would be an yeah. awesome dram for that time, you know? This cold weather outside and you're sitting with this and then sipping onto this. I could also see this out in the mountains, sitting with a warm jacket on, sitting in front of a fire pit, the snow falling. You know, now yeah. you're making me want to do that. <laughs> well, I mean, right now, this is... Pre, pre-recorded, obviously, but um, Hurricane Hillary is going on outside right now, so I'm surprised we can't hear more of that, but um, <laughs> not where I want to be sitting outside uh, right no, now. No, but. no, not now. And I'm so sorry that you came here for the only time we've ever had a tropical storm in Los I, Angeles. You know, I was surprised to hear that there's a you know hurricane mm. coming through Los Angeles, and I'm like, is it true? Yeah. And, and here it is. Yeah, you know? My mom texted me, and she goes, you need to put your umbrella down on your patio. It's going to be windy. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I go outside, and I'm like, it's not windy. And she goes, no, no, in three days, there's a hurricane coming. I said, whatever, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to that. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. That's fantastic. I can't, I mean, they're both vastly different. 
And, and what's the what's what's the youngest age in that one? Are you allowed to say? This is seven year. Wow, These, both of them taste far older than than that. But then again, the maturation in India is far different from far different from yeah. the rest of the world. You know, bingo. You're right. And for us, you know, if you can see the color. Yeah, that's dark. And to get this color elsewhere in the world in a cooler climate, it's going to take at least 18 to 20 how, years. How, what is the coldest temperature it usually gets in Fahrenheit? So, again, depending on which part of India your distillery is located, the temperatures can vary. Mm -hmm. Right? For us, where our distillery is located, it's in the north. Uh, it's, from the, it's in the northern part of India. Okay. Uh, from Delhi towards the Himalayas. Okay. You travel. It's, it's just on the foothills of the Himalayas. So a few miles away from the foothills of the Himalayas is the distillery. Now, the temperature over there gets crazy. In the summers, it can go up to 122 Fahrenheit. <laughs> And with high humidity and high heat. And the winters can go down to 32. So the humidity is half whiskey just floating around. <laughs> Absolutely. So we lose the first year, sometimes in certain barrels, we lose up to 14% of our liquid Oof. across. And um, in fact, when we fill the liquid into the barrels, it's done at 62.5%. Oh. And after four years, the, we lose water. So the alcohol goes up to 66, 65 in some cases. Uh, so that's the kind of heat uh, that we, and humidity that I'm we I'm going to say that's very beneficial because you can get a lot more beautiful whiskey in oh, a sh shorter time. Absolutely, than, absolutely. No offense, my friends in Scotland and Ireland and other colder places, although I would much rather be in a colder place because... <laughs> All right, so we've got one more here to taste. What is this one? Okay, now this one uh, is a very special dram. Right, um, it's a very special ram because this one is India's first pure cane juice rum. Oh. India is the world's second largest grower of sugar cane. However, no distillery in India has made a cane juice rum and aged it. So we are the first distillery to distill pure cane juice rum. And I'm loving the fact that you're cleaning the glass <laughs> and cleaning your palate. Mm. <laughs> so this is the first, we are the first distillery in, in oh, India. Is this 12 year old? Is that what that means? Yes. Okay. Yes. So the, the cane juice rum matured in ex-bourbon barrels for 12 long years. Now the interesting story about this bottling is that uh, out of the 996 barrels, that's the first batch that we distilled and put in. After 12 years, when the liquid was taken out, we could only retrieve 6.6% 6 .6 of the liquid. Wow. The rest, 93% of the liquid was gone. A large angels portion stole of it. A large portion of it was angels. There were a few barrels which were leaking, and we never noticed it till about a few years before we bottled that it. That must be your distillery cat going in there and <laughs> yeah, or the monkeys at it. Yeah, the, the, there's some monkeys around the, the monkey. Oh, well, see, that makes more sense. They have, they have posable <laughs> thumbs, so they're probably in there... <laughs> Doing Bring their out. own bit, yeah? All right, let's try this bad boy. Okay, this one um, okay, okay, okay. is cane juice rum with no added sugar, no added oh. flavors, um, no spice, but whatever is coming out of it, it's fruitcake, leather. I get the leather. Yeah, uh, some of them says, uh, say eggnog. I, I, I was just going to say eggnog. Right? Yeah, so it, It's very eggnog. And it's How do you get eggnog? I don't, see, I don't know what's in eggnog. I just buy the premix. <laughs> so this one is very interesting because this, it's, it's, it's the... Oh, that's totally eggnog on the, on the tongue. I've never had anything besides eggnog that tastes like eggnog. This is fantastic. Delicious, right? Mm. It's better than eggnog. <laughs> is rum what goes in eggnog? I don't even know. I, I, don't, I have no idea what goes in eggnog. So I, I was surprised because for, for, for me, for, wow. I've never tasted eggnog in my life uh, because that's not something that is, uh, that's available in India or right. something that we enjoy in India. And every time I taste it, people say it tastes like eggnog, but in a very pleasant way. And I'm like, what? So, you, so you still haven't had eggnog? I still haven't had it. So I'm going right, to... So you need to, you need to come back here around November when it starts coming. It's coming, it, it comes out like with the milk section. Right. And, um... That's the the alcohol free version, and then they sometimes have alcohol versions in the alcohol. But I like the alcohol free surgeon versions because then you can, you know, measure out what you want to put ah, in. Ah, interesting. Um, I don't I don't know how to make eggnog, but it's it's well, usually it's usually when I buy it, it's too thick for me, so I add milk or cream to like 
get it a little bit down, but man, this is so. This is this is delicious, right? It's, it's like there's there's fruits, there's banana, there's there's cinnamon, there's spice, there's nutmeg. This doesn't even taste like a rum to me. There you go. So rum from India, which is very unique, although it's like an agricultural style rum, uh, it doesn't have the funky funkiness that one would expect from an agricultural right. rum. But this one is totally different and very. And would you believe that it's a hundred proof liquid that you're drinking? It's fifty no. percent ABV. It was not that hot at all. Yeah, uh, that's that's what makes it a great sipping rum for you to have. This is definitely a Christmas drink because of the eggnog. And and the beauty of it is that's the first fantastic. batch that we did, we could only bottle three thousand six hundred bottles worldwide. Oh wow. Out of which 1,200 has made its way to the US. Oh, that's good. And each bottle is numbered. So if you see, this is bottle number 814 mm -hmm. out of the 1,200 that you're tasting across. So yeah. That's crazy madness. That's that's a very special limited edition. Only a few bottles out there uh, in the. In Are the you going to keep. You're not going to keep making it then? Uh, we do have an eight year old that we are launching uh, okay. um, uh, pretty quickly. Soon. So you'll do the same mash bill, but not necessarily a 12-year? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. We may need to wait for a couple of more years to get the next batch of 12 years. So this is the first batch, maybe another year or two till we get the next batch of 12 Now, have you tasted the 8-year? Does it, does it have the eggnog flavor? Um, no. To be very frank, I tasted the 8-year much before I was told that it has the eggnog flavor. Oh, so you don't now know. I need to go back and compare the 8-year old and see what's happening. But yeah. the liquid, 8-year liquid is not very far away from this, so I'm sure it's going to carry. There's something called as a distillery character, and I think that's 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 there in as well. Yeah, That's awesome. And do you have any other expressions that you're planning to bring into the U.S. soon? Yes. Um, we do have a peated sherry cask finish. Oh. And probably this is the first time I'm telling it out, actually. Oh. So, Good. Uh, so you heard uh, it here. For, her, heard it here. Nah. You heard it here first. Okay, I really can't say it. You, you heard, heard it, it here, here first. first. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we're going to come up with uh, something which is called as the Diwali edition. Okay. Now Diwali is the festival of lights in India. Oh. Uh, it's, it's called Diwali or Deepavali, depending upon the region in India. It's called as a festival of lights. And we said for every Diwali starting this year, we will go ahead and launch a new expression. Oh, that's great. Just as like a festival release. Is this one of those things where they put the candle and it floats up in the bag or... Uh, no, 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 not like that. These are these are one that where they light up a, a lamp, uh, which is mostly in earthen uh, pots actually, uh, so earthen vessels in which they pour oil and light up lamps. Okay. Um, burst crackers as well. Okay. Uh, so it's 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 kind of the good uh, taking over the evil. So the light festival of light and the you know light taking over the dark. So and what time of year is that? It this October November is when it, okay. it falls in. So we we're, we're doing a peated cherry cask release for this Diwali, uh, okay. and uh, it's going to be again a limited expression, but. It's it's a delicious drama. Pete and the Sherry cast coming together. It's going to make awesome. it very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you have the bottle, you'll need to send me a photo so we can pop it in. Oh, I'm going to send you a photo and maybe I'll also send you a sample. To oh, taste that would together. be fantastic. Yeah, I would love absolutely. a sample. Yeah. So what else um, should we be looking for out of your brands here? Well, the uh, Kamikara is going to come up with an eight-year-old. We spoke about the Diwali edition. Um, I think... That's all for now at the moment. Uh, but I think whatever we are trying to do, we are trying to do it good and keep it simple, clean, neat and good. So people enjoy it. But They're the most important delicious. thing, I mean, we are a distillery who have been aiming to keep the prices of our products very reasonable. Um, because we don't want to be um, overly priced so that it's sitting on the shelf. Yeah. So the Indri Trini uh, is retailed at around $55 to $60 oh, that's a good. Uh, you know, a triple cask whiskey at that price. Um, the Drew is going to be, although it's a cask strength, seven years in bourbon cask in India. People would expect it to be like hundred and fifty dollars upwards. Yeah, this is going to be retailed at eighty five dollars to oh, ninety dollars. Wow. That's re and, very reasonable for that. And the twelve year aged rum, uh, limited edition, at ninety dollars top. So wow. 
So that's fantastic. Everything that's 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 approachable, so people can buy it and try it across. So yeah, it's delicious. And I know you're doing a, a tour right now. Yep. Um, uh, you're here in LA, and then you're going to Orange County tomorrow. Yes, please. And then uh, up to Portland. Portland, Oregon. and then I finish off with Seattle. Okay. So if you guys hear about his tours, by all means, jump on board because you don't want to miss these. These are fantastic. I'm. I just can't even believe that they're as young as they are, and that they're as dark as they are, and as delicious. I mean. I'm not a big rum fan, so the fact that I'm in love with I'm not even a big um, eggnog fan. I'll have it, but not. But now I want to drink that all the time. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's so nice. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much thank for being so here. For, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here with you. You're yeah. welcome. World of Wheezy is up next. Stay with us. Like what you've seen on BRC? Want to see more? Experience more? And maybe even taste more? Then head over to our Kofi site and become a member of the Barrel Room Parlor. By choosing the Copper Level membership, you'll have exclusive access to videos related to topics discussed on the podcast and blog posts for members only. As an Amber member level, you'll enjoy everything from our Copper Level as well as various spin-off series including The Cutting Room Floor and Kindred Spirits. In addition, the Amber membership includes exclusive discounts to live in-person events. To join, visit www.barrelroomchronicles.com and click on Become a Member in the navigation bar. Or go straight to our Kofi site at ko-fi.com slash brc and click on the membership link. Once you've joined, you'll have access to everything your chosen level has to offer. You'll even be able to participate with the show by commenting on videos and other posts. Don't wait. Sign up today for exclusive content and event discounts in the Barrel Room Parlor. All right, Louise. Uh, Carrie. We, I met uh, Madhu during the hurricane here last spring, and uh, he had me try several things, and he sent me over some samples, and I know this was your favorite of the samples he sent. So tell me, uh, well, let's first of all, let's get a little dram. And this one is the uh, Indri Single Malt Indian Whiskey, um, the Three Wood. So that's the one we are having. And... Why don't you tell me what you thought about this and what made you what it made you think of for either pairing or or uh, or cooking? Mm. Well, I don't know. I guess what it made me think of is the uh, absolute sometimes funk that happens with really delicious spirits and food especially during the aging process yeah Yeah. yes it has this lovely 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 funk to me and i don't know what that is i listen i don't know what i'm talking about half the time i just know what i like just saying and so to me that was of interest it was original uh i think that this particular whiskey reminds me of um the type of whiskey you might have if you were end of the night sitting in a bar and maybe you have not you've eaten but you haven't eaten enough and maybe you need a little snack. Like now? Which is like <laughs> every day for me. Um, but I would love, like, if I close my eyes and drink this, like, I would love to have this in a bar, a little dram of this, and have some, like, some samosas mm. or a little, some some fried or baked little handheld bar foods that okay would, not a meal not and nothing that gets your fingers dr- like and a thing you could just pick up and eat like i could definitely eat what do you think uh, about potato balls fried potato balls i mean i think a, any fried ball is delicious <laughs> 
but let's a do fried, a variety of fried a balls. fried potato ball. What do you mean by that? Like you know the ones that they have at Porto's, the little fried potato balls. Oh, like a Cuban style. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, like a like oh, okay. So like a, a like croquetas and things like. Of course, yes, exactly something like that. Okay. But being that this is an Indian um, distillery, I my, you know I immediately think of samosas. Of course, mm. I think of all of the different delicious um, bready. Um, folded snacks that exist. Would you have in, curry in any of these items? Inside, sure. Like, you know, in a samosa, right, you can have, like, I, I like just the potato pea simple ones, you know, but um, of course. And this, again, is just how I am tasting yeah, the this. Yeah, the right? complexity of this is... is the complexity yeah. of this is, like, bomb. Okay. So that's how I'm feeling. It's not very specific. It's not, but you know what? I, I get like I'm I'm totally feeling like fried potato balls or some fried shrimp or some fried uh, zucchini maybe with a little bit of um, spice. Yeah. Yeah, and I think about like you know an empanada even like oh, if yeah. we think about if if for those that don't aren't familiar with like. A, a true samosa maybe then it's easier to think of an empanada you can think about that it's like not greasy it's not fried it's something you're holding in your hand but it's salty it's savory and this is hearty enough to go with that you know as like a late night kind of nip at a bar so that, that sounds delicious yeah and i right totally agree with yeah now i want to go get some <laughs> some fried food and, and have it with this but um I have just enough left to cheers with you. Thank you so much. Mm. So good. And I want to thank Madhu for sending over some samples because uh, this stuff is fantastic. Louise, thank you, as always, and we will see you next time. That does it for today's show. To read notes on this episode or learn more about our guests, please visit BarrelRoomChronicles.com. Want to interact with the show or have questions for our guests? Then ask them on our socials or send us an email. Or better yet, leave us a voicemail on our website. If you like what you heard, please rate and subscribe to the podcast. If you really liked it and you want to show your support, buy us a whiskey through our Kofi site at ko-fi.com slash brc or become an exclusive member of the Barrel Room Parlor. If you work in the whiskey or spirits industry or just have a deep passion for whiskey and want to share your spirits journey, register to be a guest through our website. Last but not least, please enjoy your spirits responsibly. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, Salangeva. Barrel Room Chronicles is a production of First Real Entertainment and is available on Spotify, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, Amazon, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. 